Hello everyone, welcome back to the shed and welcome back to another video with my GSXR 750 SRAD. What we're going to be doing in this video is we are going to put the bike into dealer mode and use that to read any trouble codes that may be present in the ECU. So let's get stuck into it. Okay, so um, obviously on the internet we see fa uh, Facebook groups, forums, etc., etc., where people go on and they ask questions, uh, i.e., my bike won't start, my bike's running rough, um, I've got flashing lights on the dashboard, and all sorts of good stuff. Now, um, most of these problems on the fuel injected machines are caused by uh, one of the sensors failing or giving a uh, incorrect reading, thereby throwing the light and a code. Um, obviously the people on these groups are very helpful uh, in general however without the uh, without the code that the bike is going to give you um, it would be impossible to diagnose it so that's what we're going to be looking at in this video we're going to put the bike into dealer mode and use that to read codes now if we look at the dashboard and turn on the ignition what we get here is Basically, uh, a couple of dashes, that's because the bike is not running and it's not up to temperature. Once up to temperature, obviously, this do, this um, this display uh, tells us what the uh, the coolant temperature is. Um, the light here is FI light, but it's also uh, doubles up as an oil pressure uh, light as well. So, what we need, I'm going to take the key out of my dash, uh, out of my ignition, should I say, because what I want to do is I want to go under the seat pump. Put the seat hump down there. Okay, what we're looking at is this little connector here. It's got a rubber cap on it. Um, it should have a rubber cap on it. It may not. It depends upon whether it's been lost or whatever. Sometimes these do break off uh, and it goes missing, but it should be here. It's normally tucked underneath here, out of the way, but I like, I'll leave mine just here. Ignore that one. That is the connector for the, uh, for the Optimate. Now, uh, as you can see, it's a four pin, uh, four pin connector and only two of the pins are actually occupied. Um, as you can see from the back, there's only two wires going into this connector. Now, in order to put this bike into dealer mode, all we need to do is uh, short those two terminals. Now, what we can do is you can use a device like this. This particular one isn't actually for this bike, it's for a different bike. Um, as you can see, this is a uh, six pin um, connector, not a four pin one, but it's only got two two terminals in it and it's just a switch obviously you can connect that in you can have that uh, permanently connected if you wanted to some people do opt to do that however um, I you, you know I don't think you really really need to um, you can literally do this with a piece of uh, tiny piece of wire like this this is actually a piece of lock wire paper clip anything like that will do the job perfectly fine and all you do is simply take your paper clip or your lock wire or whatever push it into the Connector like so, and then what we do, we take our key again, come to the ignition, and turn it on. Now, as you can see, the dash is different now. Now what it's displaying is C00. Um, that is good because C00 means there are absolutely no fault codes on this bike whatsoever. I wasn't expecting there to be any, um, obviously. Now, uh, one thing I will point out here, there's a little dash just to the left of the C. That little dash has three gradients on it. It's either at the bottom, the middle of the screen, or the top of the screen. Now, when the bike is running, um, at, uh, well, but basically what we need to, would need to do is have the bike running at 12,000, uh, sorry, 12,000, 1200 RPM even. At 1200 RPM, that little dash should sit in the center of the screen. If it doesn't, then the throttle position sensor requires adjustment, but I'm not gonna go into that in this video. I'm just uh, mentioning it just for interest, okay? Right, C00, as I said before, that means that there are no codes on this bike whatsoever. So, um, yeah, I'm happy. Now, what I'll do, I'll um, turn it off in a moment, and I will remove my bit of wire, and then I can take my rubber cap, 
and refit it and that's all good okay so what i want to do quickly is just discuss a couple of things um had this um been c11 on the screen that would have been a camshaft uh, position sensor error was it c12 that would have been a crankshaft position sensor error c13 uh inlet air pressure um you know and and so on and so on there's loads and loads of uh, loads and loads of codes and they all mean different things so if you're going to go onto a forum and ask somebody about any of these codes those codes are what you would take to the forum ask people and they will tell you or what you can do is go to the end of this video and i am going to list all the codes specific to this bike perfect now, one thing I will point out is a C11 or C12 uh, code will cause uh, problems with the bike running. Uh, C11, if the bike is already running and then it throws that code, the bike will remain running perfectly okay. Um, however, once you turn it off and back on again, it will not start because it will need that, um, it will need that initial uh, signal from the, uh, the camshaft position center in order to start. Likewise, the crankshaft position sensor, the bike will neither run nor start with that fault. So you will need to fix that in order to get the bike running again. All of the other codes will allow the bike to start and run because they um, can, well, basically the ECU has defaults, like uh, fail-safe defaults for want of a better term, and the bike will run on those fail-safe defaults. It just won't have all the parameters necessary to run properly. So it may not run um, under all circumstances, and obviously you don't really want to run your bike like that anyway. If you have a problem, fix it and you should be back to perfect health. Anyway guys, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just leave um, the fault codes. Uh, basically it's just a little screen grab from the, uh, from the factory manual for you to have a look at. And hopefully, yeah, you, uh, you should be able to use that to diagnose your problem. Anyway guys, thank you for watching. Hope you found this video useful. If you did, drop a comment below and uh, I'll see you all for the next one guys. Take care. Bye-bye now.